Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for the Lionsgate Fiscal 22 First Quarter Conference Call. We'll begin with opening remarks from our CEO, John Feldheimer, followed by remarks from our CFO, Jimmy Barge. After their remarks, we'll open the call for questions. Also joining us on the call today are Vice Chairman Michael Burns, COO Brian Goldsmith, Chairman of the TV Group, Kevin Beggs, and Chairman of the Motion Picture Group, Joe Drake. And from STARS, we have President and CEO Jeffrey Hirsch, CFO Scott McDonald, President of Domestic Networks, Allison Hoffman, and President of International Networks, Saperna Kale. I'll now turn the call over to John. Thank you, Nile, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to begin with a few highlights from a strong financial quarter and then drill down in each of our businesses. Turning to our individual businesses, it was a strong financial quarter for STARS, but like the rest of the industry, we were impacted by a reduction in at-home viewership and, importantly, a light content quarter due to COVID-driven production delays. We continued to grow our base of international subscribers in the quarter, but domestic subscribers declined, a temporary drop that we have already reversed since the end of the quarter. In fact, two weeks after the quarter ended, PowerBook 3, Raising Canaan, debuted to the second biggest Star's original series premiere ever, driving over 800,000 global subscriber gross ads in the first week alone and an 80% spike in viewership on the app. As a result, we are again growing our domestic over-the-top subscriber base, which is already back to the March quarter's record levels. And with our biggest and strongest Star's original series slate ever this year, with 12 scripted series compared to seven last year and a building cadence of five tentpole series over the next three quarters, we continue to expect STARS global subscriber growth this year to outpace subscriber growth last year. Our confidence is buttressed by a very strong slate that, following Raising Canaan, includes wrestling drama Heels, starring Stephen Amell and Alexander Ludwig, getting great early reviews, the second season of the hit series Power Book 2 Ghost, the sixth season a fan favorite Outlander, Curtis 50 Cent Jackson's crime family drama BMF, the horror comedy Shining Veil vale, starring Courtney Cox, and the debut of Power Book 4 Force. These will be followed next season by high-end properties such as the Watergate drama Gaslit, starring Julia Roberts and Sean Penn, the John Wick prequel The Continental, and The Serpent Queen, based on the dark legend of Catherine de' Medici. Internationally, subscriber growth continued, but was slowed by a light content quarter as well as the global reopening. Here again, we have seen a significant subscriber uptick with the international launch of Raising Canaan, which, along with Ghost, Run the World, and The Girlfriend Experience, proves that great programming for our core audiences in the United States attracts a global audience as well. Combined with Lionsgate feature films and library titles that are driving our theatrical content offering and best-in-class third-party acquisitions of The Great, Gangs of London, and the international premiere of Dr. Death later this quarter, our best of global SVOD programming continues to set us apart as a home for original, adult, fiercely premium content, complementary to every platform and a compelling value proposition for every bundle. The next question will come from Stephen K. Hall with Wells Fargo. Please go ahead. Thanks. Um, maybe a, a couple for Jeff. So on STARS, uh, could you just unpack that subscriber forecast a little bit about uh, adding more subscribers this year than last? I know you have a big content pipeline coming in the rest of the fiscal year. It just seems like a lot of what we've seen in streaming is that the pandemic might have provided some pull forward. So just curious what gives you the confidence that – now that we're coming out of the pandemic, you'll be able to have as strong a year for net ads um, as you did uh, last year. And then uh, related on, on STARS International, um, how should we just think about segment profit for that segment this year? Uh, I think maybe you've talked about it on a profitability basis looking similar to last year. Just didn't know if there was any update to, to that outlook. Thanks. Hey, Steve, how are you? Uh, yeah, great. Uh, you know, as John and um, Jimmy talked about remarks, it was a very light content quarter for us. We premiered two half-hour comedies that were, were great shows that uh, had 
think that coupled with, you know, the world opening back up, it was, you know, it was not our strongest quarter as we had guided on the last call. Um, but as they said also in the prepare remarks, we're, we're very confident that this year will be stronger than last year. You know, we're going from seven originals to 12 originals. We have five, ten polls in the next three quarters that drive large, large um, growth of subscriber acquisition. We also saw churn at a historic low in this quarter. So those two things coupled together give us great confidence um, that we can, can we will accelerate growth this year. Uh, Canaan obviously premiered, as John said in his premier remarks, to huge numbers, huge viewership. And, and simply put, if Canaan was six weeks earlier, we would be having a different sequential conversation than we're having right now. And on the uh, segment profit uh, portion of things, Stephen, yeah, you're right, plus or minus, uh, you know, in, in, in line with uh, the prior year investment. And, you know, that's really based off the timing of content, et cetera. We like what we're doing there. We like the market share we're capturing. We're leaning into it. Great. Thank you. Operator, can we get the next again, question, please? Once again, if you have a question, please press star then one. The next question is from Thomas Yeah with Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Thanks. Thanks for taking my questions. Uh, two quick ones for Jeff. On STARS ARPU, the domestic ARPU appeared to be relatively stable sequentially with last quarter, which is a little lower than the historical trend. I, I think you had cited some heavier promotional activity happening then. Did that continue into the quarter? And then a related kind of question, if you can give us an update on the unit economics across linear and U.S. OTT um, and whether or not the, you know, the mix of direct versus retail partners kind of impacts ARPU going forward, but the outlook is there, that'd be helpful. Thank you. So on the, on the ARPU basis for the quarter sequentially, you know, we've said that ARPU will fluctuate around you know, 575 to 610, depending on when subs come in in the quarter and some of the promotional uh, parts of the business. Again, churn was really low in the quarter, a historic low, and so that kind of stabilized it a little bit. But we didn't have, um, you know, as much coming in the front door, so it was actually pretty flat uh, sequentially. Um, when you look at uh, ARPU linear versus domestic, uh, I'll remind everybody that, you know, over the last couple of years, we've moved most of our linear deals to be a la carte deals. So over 82% of our of our linear deals are a la carte, and so. Over time, that a la carte ARPU has actually started to collide with the with the OTT ARPU because, in essence, it's a rev share deal, and so you, you actually see those numbers coming together pretty quickly. Long term, we think that we'll again, like I said, somewhere between 580 and 610 for the for the domestic business. Okay. 